and I just want to say again that we are going through, for those of you that may be new here, we are going through the book of 1 Corinthians. We are in chapter 4, but we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go back to 3 for just a couple of minutes here. But um, chapter 3 makes it fairly clear. Ba based on chapters, ba based on the first couple of verses in chapter 3, you can, you, you can be saved and be carnal. Be, be, being carnal doesn't doesn't mean now uh, certainly a lost person is carnal because carnal carnal minded means to be fleshly minded means to be concerned with the things of the flesh the things of the world so certainly a lost person is carnal but but based on this verse you can be saved and be carnal it, it, sa it says in verse 1 and I brethren could not speak unto you as unto carnal or as unto spiritual but as unto carnal so there's a difference there's a difference. One is opposite. You're spiritual or you're carnal. You're spiritually minded or you're, or you're carnally minded. And by the way, uh, certainly, these two, certainly these two mindsets fluctuate. I mean, you, you, might, you, you might go from spiritual minded to carnal, mi carnal minded in the same day. You know, you, you might be running good and doing fine and something comes up in your life or you think of a person that upsets you and, and, and within a second or two, when it, when it comes to that situation, brother, you, you know what I'm thinking, don't you? When it comes to that situation, you're automatically carnally minded. You're automatically carnal because based on, based on this chapter, if you give yourself over to strive or envy, then, you're, then, then, then while, you're, while, you're in that, while you're exercising that emotion over your mind, you're carnally minded. So it's, so, and we know they were saved because it says, and I, brother, he calls them brethren, says that I cannot speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. So we know that you can be saved and still be carnal. See, in, in, in chapter 2, we have, we have the compare and contrast uh, of the wisdom of the world versus the wisdom of God. Here we have the co compare and contrast of the carnal versus the spiritual. So you can be saved and still be carnal. And also, just because you're saved doesn't necessarily make you spiritual in this context. It doesn't necessarily make you spiritual in this context because he tells them they're not spiritual. He tells them here in this chapter that they're not spiritual. Now, now other times when the word spirit is used or the word spiritual, it's talking about saved people. But here in this context, you can be saved and go into heaven and sealed to the day of redemption. Your salvation can never be in jeopardy. But you can be saved and not necessarily be spiritual. Because he tells them here, he, can, he can't speak to them as spiritual people. So in this context, spiritual indicates a certain type of maturity. Because in, in the last couple of verses, in, in, in chapter 2, verse 15 says, as we pointed out last week, we're just going through it again real quick. It says in, it says in verse 15 of chapter 2, But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. And, and, and I really like this verse. I, I really enjoy this verse because I don't have to go around wondering. I don't have to be in a, in a dark room trying to find a light switch. I can know what I'm supposed to do. I can move forward in confidence based on the principles of the world. I don't have to go around apologizing for everything that happens. As, as soon as I hit some resistance, I, I make a decision and move forward. But as soon as somebody challenges me on it, I start stammering and stuttering and apologizing for my actions. I don't have to do that. I, I can move forward in total confidence that what I'm doing is based on the Word of God. Now, the Bible also says, he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. That's a blanket statement. It says, he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. So we need to wait on the Lord. We need to count the cost. We need to use discernment. All those things are true. But once we do that, and the Lord gives us direction, we can move forward in total confidence. Why? Because he that is spiritual, and again, this word spiritual in this context seems to indicate a certain level of maturity that the people in chapter 3, while they're saved, don't have. So, so you can be saved and still be carnal, and, and you can be saved... And not necessarily be spiritual, but I want to say again, no matter, no, no matter what your state of character, if you've trusted Christ, your salvation's never in jeopardy. 
Now, we ought to conduct ourselves a certain way. The, the Bible has hundreds of verses that say that. We ought, to, we ought to be as wise as serpents, but as harmless as doves. You know, we ought, to practice, we ought to practice all these things. But your salvation, if you're in Christ, you're in Christ for all eternity. All right. Now, any, any Brother Ron, if you would get the mic, any questions, any other questions or comments concerning this before we move on to chapter 4? All right, bring the mic up here to Brother Dewey. You got to know what you believe and why you believe it. So according to verses 1 and 2, the time, we ought to be able to expect certain things out of a person who has professed faith in Christ and a certain amount of time has passed by. Yes, sir. And so, and if they're not there, it doesn't mean they will be there. We could come, could it be, could it be compared to retardation, physical, mental retardation? It'd be a spiritual retardation. Yes, I believe so. So that, uh, but it's by choice in this case. It's not yeah. by natural birth. It's, it's by willful. choice. Yeah. See, there, there, there are certain elements. There, there are certain elements in my life that that I, that I may never mature to. I may never get to a certain level of maturity in certain elements because you get you got to understand too You can compartmentalize this stuff. I mean there, there might be one area where I'm where I'm where I'm supposed to be as far as my maturity level There, there well, I say might be there is an area where, I, where I'm not where I'm supposed to be I guarantee you if you examine me long enough all of us we have areas where We're, we're just not where we're supposed to be you know, it's like for, for now for those of you older people, you're not gonna know what I'm talking about. But 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 on certain video games, uh, 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 you, you can build you you can build your own player. Like when you play when you now I haven't by the way I haven't played this game in years. But a, a basketball game, you can build your own player and, and see, and and you can and, and you can make his speed crank all the way up. You can crank his speed all the way up. But as you crank his speed up, his size is going down. Because big, you know, big seven foot tall guys aren't very fast. So what I'm saying is, if you crank his speed way up, then he's not going to be very big. If you crank his size way up, then he's not going to be very fast. So what I'm saying is, if you, if you look at our lives like a meter, we're going to have certain areas of our lives where we're way up here. We're very mature in this area. We're going to have other areas where we're kind of way down here. And that's the way it works. Yes, Brother Dewey. I'm sure you have, based on the look on your face, I'm sure you For have. For us older people who don't understand. Um, <laughs> well, you would be in that game. category. You. <laughs> um, <laughs> on the, on the, the matter, it, 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 what you're saying, though, is if you're retarded in one area, it affects your whole life. It doesn't, it's, it's not, you say it's compartmentalized. But it, but yet it's a part of the whole. So if if you if you're advanced in one area but not in another area, then it's going to affect the whole pro picture. Well, yeah, sure. But the but, effectiveness of the yeah, whole picture, yeah, which yeah. we're supposed and, and everything that's of God is in balance. Yes, Would that not be true. Sure, it, you sure. You know, God expects us to be in balance, not out, not imbalanced in any area. So yeah. maturity would be growing into balance. Maybe. Yeah, where, where, where everything is, I don't know, I guess the word would be equal or proportionate. But also we need to point out that just because, uh, uh, listen, a, per, a person may have a, a major character flaw, but that doesn't mean you got to throw them out. That they, they may be really good. They may be really good in one area. That, that they, they may have, God may have given them a gift. I mean, I, I, I've known people that, 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 I mean, I've seen it in my own life. I've known people, they have, a, they, they have, God's obviously given them something in a particular area. But in another area, they're always struggling. And so what, so what we should be doing is, first of all, you got to be self-aware. You have, I, I don't enjoy talking to people who are oblivious about themselves. You, you ever had somebody, you, you ever had somebody walk up to you and make a crack about what you're wearing, and their tie's crooked. You know, and, and and they're and they're making a crack about what you're wearing, and their tie's crooked, and they have no idea. And and, and, the, and I'm checking my tie right now. And and the, 
you know, you, you got people that walk around like a bull in a china shop and they think they're funny. By the way, Proverbs talks about that. Proverbs talks about the guy that sings songs to a heavy heart. Somebody that's always joking or, or, or somebody that says, that they'll say something and they'll say, am I not in sport? Which what, what we say today is, you know, they'll insult you and say, well, I was just joking. Slap you on the back and say, I was just, and I won't tell you what I'm thinking when that happens to me. Because that, that's not spiritual, being, being spiritual minded. But, but, but you, you, really, you, you really have to be self-aware. The, the psalmist said, search my heart. The psalmist says, he, he said, I, I want to know what my shortcomings are so I can fix them. So you have to be self-aware because remember, if you're spiritual, you can judge all things. You, 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 can, you can sit and, and examine your life in the light of the word of God and know what you need to fix. Because we all have things we need to fix, and, and, and whatever we need to fix, we need, we need to be working on fixing it. We don't need to be saying, well, I'm a sinner. Like that, like that woman, Brother, Brother Rowan talks about some, well, the Lord knows. The Lord knows. No, whatever's wrong with us, we need to be working on fixing. Now, so, so any, other, any other questions or comments? All right, we're going to move on to chapter 4 with the time we have left. All right, let's go. just turn to chapter 4 if you would, if you're not there already. Let a man sow a count of us as of, minister, as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. More, moreover, it is required in a steward that a man be found faithful. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge, I judge not mine own self, for I know nothing by myself, yet I, am, yet I am not hereby justified, but he that judges me is the Lord. <coughs> therefore, therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart, and then... Shall every man have praise of God? And these things, brother, and I have, I, I, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of man above that which is written, that no, that no one of you be puffed up for that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. For what maketh thee to differ from another, and what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory? As if thou hast not received it. Now ye are full. Now ye are rich. Ye have reigned as kings with, without us. And I would to God that ye did reign, that we might also reign with you. For I think that God has set forth, for I think that God has set forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world and to the angels and to men. We are fools. There's that theme again. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. We, uh, ye, ye are honorable, but we are despised. But, but, it, but, but unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling places and labor working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world, and are the and are the and are the offscuring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but my beloved sons, I warn you. For though ye have ten thousand instructors in Christ, ye have not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. For this cause I have sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere, as I teach everywhere in every church. Now some are puffed up as though I would not come unto you, but I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. What will ye? Shall I come unto you with a rod or in love and in the spirit of meekness? All right. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, first of all, does anyone have any questions or comments about chapter four? All right. 
bring the mic up here to this gentleman. <clears throat> Good morning. Uh, it talks about the uh, the mysteries of God. I think that means the, uh, we don't have the right to judge. You know what I mean? We have to uh, be accepting and allow it to be as it is. Okay. All right. Let's talk about that a little bit. Um, see, in that in that we don't have the right to judge. That's true, and it's not true, because we just read a verse that says, "He which is spiritual judges all things." We just read that verse uh, up in chapter 2. So, so as we discussed that a little bit, if someone, if someone is doing something openly that's contrary to the Word of God, I can tell them they're wrong. I have full confidence to, to tell a person, if a person is a drunk, I don't have to give them my opinion. I can open my Bible and tell them in love that they're wrong. I can't tell them they're not saved. I don't know if they're saved or not. I can't tell them God won't use them because God will use them. God will use anybody. But I can tell them, based on the principles of the Word of God, it would be better for you if you didn't drink alcohol. A drunk knows, he's, knows he shouldn't be a drunk. If you go down to Pensacola and you find ten of them, and you ask them all if they're honest, they're all going to tell you they shouldn't be a drunk. A thief knows he shouldn't be a thief. A person that doesn't go to church faithfully know, knows that he ought to go to church more faithfully. So, the, the, the issue is, when, when, it comes to, when it comes to things I can prove from the Word of God, I can point my finger at someone in love and in respect for them as an individual and say, based on the Word of God, you shouldn't be doing this. And see, anytime you go against the Word of God, forget... Forget about Paul Johnson and his opinion. Anytime you go against the word of God, it's going to cost you. So there, there, there's a lot of things floating around in society today that I don't have to be accepting of. I don't have to accept it. Now, I don't wish harm on anybody. Christ died for the whole world. Christ died for the whole world ever since paid for. That's not up for debate. But, 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 when, a, but when a, and I'll just say it, when a homosexual, they want to tell me that I'm wrong. For to, to, when, when I tell my sons, as I do on a regular basis, son, a, a, a boy marries a girl. That's what you do. You, you, you grow up. First, you learn how to clean your bedroom. That's first. You, you, you learn how to clean your bedroom, and you learn how not to drop six rolls of toilet paper in the toilet a week. You got to do those two things first. Before you can get a girlfriend, you got to learn how to do that. You got to learn how not to drop my toilet paper in the toilet four or five times a day. You got to learn those things first. Drop a whole roll of that stuff costs money. That, that's, 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 anyway, that's another sermon. If that should be a sermon at all. All right, but, there, but once you learn these things and you get ready to get married, you don't, you don't go and find some, some boy and say, well, I can love whoever I want to love. Listen, how dare you tell me who I can love and not love? Bible doesn't say that. Bible says male and female created he them. So I can judge that situation and tell them unequivocally that they're wrong. Now, do I try to help them? Absolutely. Do I love them? Absolutely. Do I give them Christ? Absolutely. No question about it. All my decisions ought to be made from a position of compassion. But when they tell me that, that, that for me to teach my, teach my two sons, we're not going to discuss my daughter. She's never getting married. But for, for, for me to teach my two sons that boys grow up and become men, by the way, not limp noodles. You grow up and become a man. You grow up and become a man, then you, then you, marry, then, then you marry a good, godly woman. That's the only option. But why? Because I can look at the scriptures and say, male and female created he them. Because see, now they're not one, the homosexual community, who Christ died for, I can't emphasize that enough, but the political apparatus that is the homosexual community, they, they are now, they're not saying, you leave us alone and we'll leave you alone. They're not saying that. They want me to be quiet. 
And it's nothing personal. They want this. They want this right here to be quieted. They want this book to be wiped out of all the influences it has, on, and that it still has, even to this day as bad as we are, that it still has, on. they, they want it gone, they want it out. So I can look at that situation and, and I can judge it based on the word of God and say it's wrong and I won't stand for it. I won't permit it. I won't accept it. I will not accept it. All right. Any other questions or comments? Any other questions or comments? <laughs> All right. But, but, it is, but it is true. It is true. That we should not be judgmental people. You can't help somebody if you're, if you're a judgmental person. You can't do it. But, but, but I gauge my beliefs and, and, and I gauge my philosophies on the Word of God. And if it goes against the Word of God, I can say it's wrong. But, but it's true. See, the verse, by the way, the verse in Matthew 7, 1, judge not that you be not judged, that's not even what that's talking about. That, 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 that's not, the, 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 way, the way it's used today is not even what it's, what it's talking about. Christ is reprimanding the Pharisees for judging people by their own standards. See, the Pharisees weren't interested in what the Bible said. The, the, the Pharisees as a whole, the, the organization, by the time Christ came on the scene, the Pharisees as a whole, I'm not saying every Pharisee was corrupt. We know there are some good Pharisees who sought Christ. Nicodemus is one of them. But, 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 but the Pharisaical organization as a whole was totally corrupt. A and they were judging everyone else, not by what the scripture said, but by their own standards. We can't do that. Paul said judging themselves by themselves among themselves is not wise. Any other hands? Any other comments? Yes, sir, Brother Dewey. I'm sure you're going to get to it, but in the, he, he mentioned about the mysteries of God, mystery being tied to judgment, and it is in the next couple of verses. And so yes, sir. I'm waiting on you to touch on that. Well, I had to take care of the other first, but yeah, but, but we, we, we're going to get there. The, you know, he tied it, our brother tied it with the mysteries of God. I'm, I'm kind of curious as to the, the connection there. Well, again, the, the, see, we, we have to be careful how we, how we use that because... There are, things that, there are things about God that we don't know. There are things about God that, we, that but again, this, this is tied to, you know, the, the, the judgment that was mentioned in chapter 3 about men, being, men are going to receive their rewards. And we shouldn't judge, see, for example, we shouldn't judge someone outwardly necessarily and say, well, they're going to get a pile of rewards. Listen. They're, they're, they're in church every service, so they're going to get a pile of rewards. When, that, when, when, when they stand before Christ, they're going to get a pile of rewards. They may, not get, they, they may not get as much as rewards as we think they will. Because maybe they're sitting in church with a bad attitude. Maybe they're sitting in church uh, surfing Facebook. We don't know. So, 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 so that's something, to, to your point, that's something we can't judge. That, that's up to the Lord. Because, see, the Lord sees the heart. On, on the other hand, we, we, might, we, we might see somebody who we don't think is very important because they're not very high up in the echelons of the church. You know, they're not, and we say, well, they're not, well, well, not going to get that many rewards. And then we get to heaven and, and, and they get a stack of them. I mean, so, so, so in that sense, we can't, ju we can't judge that. We, because, because as this chapter points out, God's the one that judges the heart. See, that's why Paul talks about the, the judgment of men. By the way, he's not saying the judgment of men doesn't matter. That's not what he's saying. He, he's saying the judgment of men is a small thing compared to the judgment of God. Listen, if, if you're going to be effective in ministry, the judgment of men has to matter. It has to matter. It, there, there, are, there are certain... There are certain phrases, and, and I won't get as dogmatic here as I do at the house about this sort of thing, but, but, but there are certain phrases that I listen for. When I'm talking to an individual, you, you ever heard somebody 14 or 15 years old say, well, when I turn 18, I can do what I want to do. That lets me know 
that they don't have a lot upstairs. Which who does at 14 or 15? But, but that lets me know that when, the, the people that I've heard say that, I, I, all it means, I, I don't know if we have anybody in here that needs to hear this, but I'm going to say it anyway because maybe somebody will hear it on YouTube. All it means when you turn 18 is that the law holds you accountable for your actions. It doesn't mean that you, that you can do whatever you want to do. It doesn't mean that you're your own. Listen, I, I, don't, now I don't mean to throw everybody under the bus, but when I was 18, I didn't have enough sense to count 10 or get out of the ring. That's just me now because I was pretty dumb for a lot of years. But, uh, thank you, brother. But, uh, but, but, yes, sir, Brother Bill. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. That, that's what I'm saying. You know, when, you know we're going to be judged. And since, look, it's going to happen anyway. And, and, and the idea, and I don't worry about going to hell, but the idea of standing before God, giving an account for everything done in the body, terrifies me. See, like Brother Rowan says, that's going to be a time whenever we appreciate grace more than we ever have. So, so, but, but, it, but it's inevitable. It's coming. It's coming. So what we need to be doing is we need to be, we need to be building up gold, silver, and precious stone versus wood, hand, stubble. And the point is about your point, brother, about the mysteries of God. We don't know necessarily what that is. We, we can't look at one, I can't look at one man and say definitively, well, he's building up, uh, he's building up wood, hay, and stubble. And look at another fellow who's, who's seemingly doing everything right. And, and I can say, well, he's building up gold, silver, and precious. I don't know that. Th that's God's business. I don't know that. But as far as us wanting to be judged, Brother Bill, we, we ought to, we, we have to allow ourselves to be judged by people. That's, that brings me to my next point. Uh, an another thing I listen for when I hear somebody say, well, I, well, I, look, you, ever, you ever heard somebody say, well, I'm just going to be me. I'm just going to be me. I don't care what anybody thinks. That you, now, now, people have said that in a moment of anger. But for somebody who really believes that, they're usually a moron. Yeah, I mean, I mean, most of the time when somebody, when somebody, well, I'm just going to be who I am. I'm going to be me. Like they're somebody special. Listen, there aren't, th there aren't that many Leonardo da Vinci's running around. You know, I mean, he was an inventor. He was a, my, my point is, there have been people who were touched by God for whatever reason, and they're special. But there's not that many geniuses running around. So when somebody says, well, I'm just going to be who I am, I don't care what anybody thinks. Listen, if you don't care what anybody thinks, you will not be effective in ministry. If you do not care what people think. Now, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rephrase that a little bit. It's my job to care about what reasonable people think of me. Reasonable people. You say, well, how do you tell the difference? Well, there, there are those who, there are those who are, they're always complaining. They always magnify the negative. It doesn't matter what you do, they're going to nitpick and find the negative. I'm not concerned for those people. I, I, don't, I really have very little concern about what their opinion is or what I do. But reasonable people who really want to know truth, who really want to help the cause of Christ in the church, because that's what we're talking about, I have to be concerned about what those people think. Because the Bible says, you know what the Bible says a wise man will do? It says a wise man will take rebuke. It says a wise man will take reproof. And by the way, it doesn't say that he'll take it as long as the person telling him is older than he is. It doesn't say that he'll take it as long as the person telling him makes a certain amount of money or has been in the ministry a certain amount of years. It says a wise man will take both reproof and rebuke. Brother Donnell. Um, just just a, a comment on somebody who says they're just going to be what they are or what it... Uh, sometimes, I, I, I guess you're trying to um, focus on a certain certain group that would say that but sometimes that just means they're not going to be pretentious they're not going to be try to be something or someone that they're not well that's true I, I will certainly concede to that point but most of the time when I've heard it that's not the way it's taken you know the, the people that most of the time the people that say it are being indignant but 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 there is such a thing as well I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not putting on airs I'm not I'm not going to be pretentious because even that you can take too far I knew a fellow who was always talking about uh, was all, he was always talking about how um, he, he was just going to do what he wanted to do and, and be how he wanted to be, and, and there was this other fellow who was real concerned about image. You had you got to promote a certain image, 
You have to maintain a certain image. Well, to an extent, to an extent they're both right. You do have to maintain a certain, if you want to be effective, you have to maintain a certain image. Listen, do, do you know who does whatever they want to do? I mean, Carson is four years old. Now, Carson's a special case. He's four years old. Listen, if he wants to pick his nose at the dinner table, that's what he does until I catch him. You know, my, my point is, my, my point is my four-year-old son's not worried about what's appropriate. He's not worried about what's appropriate. If he walks by you and doesn't want to shake your hand, he doesn't shake it. Now, there are times when I go by you and don't want to shake your hand either. But I shake it. Because I'm an adult. See, to be an adult, you, ha you have to understand what's appropriate. You can't just say, I'm going to do what I want in, in that context. Because, because the, fellow that, the fellow who was never concerned about image, he was, ne he just, he, he was never concerned. Well, I, I'm, I'm just not concerned about that. Listen, the people that, the people that promote an image, they're putting on airs and they think they're better than they are. Well, well you know, that, that, that person was not as effective as he could have been. If he would have, worried, if he would have been worried about how he dressed to an extent and how he spoke to an extent, and, and, and what his table manners were, to, you know, if, if he'd have realized, okay, I'm in this situation. I'm not at home in my recliner. I'm in this situation. Okay, I, I, need, I, I need to have enough discernment to gauge what is appropriate. Because all this, all, all this has to do with being judged of men. We have to allow ourselves to be judged of men. If Brother Julian, Brother Julian is a missionary, he goes in maybe 30 or 40 churches a year. Okay, if he if he goes in there if he goes in there with with a t-shirt and a pair of shorts on, because he wants to be comfortable, he's got and he says, "Well, I'm just going to be who I am." He's probably not going to get a whole lot of support. You know, he, he he needs to learn how to speak properly. He needs to learn how to conduct himself, and because 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 whether we like it or not, men judge us. They judge us. They look at whether whether we can hold our temper or not. They look at how we speak. They look to a certain extent of how we dress. So that's what I'm referring to. Okay, and and I I assumed that's really what you had in mind, but I, I thought maybe a little bit of clarification okay. might be well, helpful. Okay. Well, thank you. With regard to um, being judged, um, a pastor pointed out uh, here recently um, in in uh, morning Bible study, the uh, Samuel's. Um, presentation is his, his, his uh, I, I can't think of the word I, if I were writing I'd probably do better um, but in, in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 12 yes he, exactly he, he actually encouraged people to to tell him if, if there were faults you know he, he wanted to know he had tried to conduct himself in such a way as to not be worthy of, of those kinds of things so so maybe it's maybe it's not a bad thing to to uh, consider the judgment of others that motivates us uh, to uh, to be what we ought to be, and 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 there put by put gives us more credential. Yes. If we do try yes, to point exactly. out something in somebody else. And so in that sense, because again, Paul's not saying here that the judgment of men don't matter. He's not saying that. He, he's saying it's a small thing compared to God because it, especially if you look at all the other verses, all, all the other things he wrote. See, like, like I've said many times before, like I've said many, many times before, if 99 people out of 100 think you have a horrible temper, then you have a horrible temper. It's not up for debate. It simply does not matter what you think about it. If, if 99 people out of 100 say you're, say, say you're dishonest, then you're dishonest. If three or four people are saying it, well, they, they could just be conspiring to try to bring you down. And, and you say, and you say, well, well, everybody had a. You say, well, the multitudes had a problem with Jesus. Only the ones that had an ulterior motive. Only the only the religious community who had an ulterior motive had a problem with Jesus. And, and, and by the way, the Bible says that when a man's ways please the Lord. Even his enemies will be at peace with him. The Bible says that I can have favor with God and man. So again, we have to allow ourselves to be judged by men, by reasonable people. All right, Brother Dewey and then Brother Gret.
Doesn't verse 5 explain what, what the judgment is here, what we're talking about? It's not, seems to me the, the whole context here is talking about motive, that which is interior, you know. Yes. Not talking about, because there's tons of scripture saying that we can judge things and, and judge yes. people in the light of the word of God and all that sort of thing. But there's something we can't judge, and that's a person's motive. We don't know. I mean, we can guess at it, yeah. stab at it, but we don't know. I don't know. And, and that's why the judgment of God's important, because God sees the heart. Yeah, See, yeah. we can't rush to judgment based on what... We can't necessarily rush to a quick judgment based on what a person does, because we can't pinpoint their motive. On the other hand, God can pinpoint their motive, so the judgment that he's going to give at the end is what matters. Yeah, and, and if a person lives in the light of that... Yeah. In the light of God's judgment, then he's, and, and I think that's what Paul's talking about, about being judged of no man, is it not? Yes, and, and by the way, if you look at verse 15 uh, of, chapter two, of chapter 2, it says, He that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. And, and if you go down, look at verse, uh, well, let's just start at verse, let's, let's look at these verses just for a couple minutes. Brother Greg, I'll get to you in just a minute. It says, let, let, let a man so give account of us. That's what it says. Let a man so give account of us as ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you. That's what he says here. Or of man's judgment. Or of man's judgment, yea, I judge not mine own self. I for I know nothing by myself, or, or, I, or I know, uh, what he's saying here is, he don't, know, he don't know anything about himself that he could be called on the carpet about, as far as man's standard. As far as man, that's what, he's, that's what he's saying here. For I know nothing by myself, yet am, I not here, yet am I not hereby justified, but he that judges me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, Things we don't know about. There's things about Greg I don't know about. That's what he said, who will bring to light both the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest or shown the counsels of the hearts. The motive. Then, after that, then shall every man have, pray, have the praise of God. In other words, God, if your motive was right, he's going to praise you. And, 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 if, and if your motive wasn't right, you're going to suffer loss. Gold, silver, and precious stone versus wood, hand, stubble. But the point, but the point that I, the, the point that I try to drive home today, is that while while the judgment of God is, is not even the, the judgment of man doesn't even compare to the judgment of God. Doesn't even compare to the judgment of God because, like Brother Dewey pointed out, listen, I can look if somebody's methods, if some, if somebody's, if what somebody does is habitually against the Word of God, I mean habitually against the word of God or the church, I can, I can take a pretty good stab at their motive. If, 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 if what they're doing is habitually against the word of God, I can take a pretty good stab at their motive. But, but, but God knows every bit of it. God knows every bit of it. And, and by the way, if somebody's got a problem with the church, which if somebody's methods or, or, or the way they conduct themselves indicate they have a problem with the church, how much of that is my fault? I'm not letting them off the hook. But I'm saying, I'm saying we, can, we can steer people in one direction or another. So while it's true that we can't know a person's motive, God's going to judge that. And while it's true that, that the judgment of man is a small thing compared to the judgment of God, we still have, he's not saying here that the judgment of man doesn't matter. Because if, if, every, if, if everybody in Faith Baptist Church Here's how it relates to eternity. <clears throat> All right, I'm saved and going to heaven. But if everybody in Faith Baptist Church thinks I'm a bum, I mean, if, that, if that's the unanimous opinion, then I'm probably building up a lot of wood, hay, and stubble. You, 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 can, pretty well, you can pretty well guess that, that if nobody has a good opinion of me, if nobody has a good, if, if man has judged me and I have failed the test unanimously, then more than likely I'm building up a lot of wood, hay, and stubble. Brother Grant, real quick, you got like, I'll, I'll give you 30 seconds and then pray for us. Back, back to the, the point of judgment like we were talking, as people we should expect people to judge yeah. us. 
because the Bible says that if you're, if you're a man given the appetite and sitting at the king's table to put a knife to your throat, yeah, people are going to draw conclusions about you by the way that you act and present yourself, so we should expect judgment. Yes, sir. Expect not just say, well, people shouldn't judge. We should say, well, I know that people's going to judge me based on what I say and do, so I should conduct myself in a reasonable manner. Yes. If a, person's a, if a person is a drunk, they drink all the time, they say, well, people shouldn't judge me for that, but yet they are already, so, I mean, it's going to happen. If, if, if you, I told you to pray, but hold on one second. If you come through that door, if you come through that door and you got, and you got blood and feathers all over you, I can judge that you just killed a chicken. I can, I can make that judgment. It's been said about me that I talk too much. That's what's been said about me. You know why? Because I talk too much. It's real simple. It's real basic. All right, now, now next week we're going to get into faithfulness. We're going we're to get into faithfulness, and we're, and we're going to get more, more into the situation of uh, divisions and, and holding, putting men up on pedestals and things like that. So, so, join, so read it again for next week. Come with your questions and comments. We'll, we'll remain in chapter 4. Brother Grant, pray for us.